Don't know if this thing's working or not. Let's get it MacGyvered up here and see. Let's see here. Yeah. Huh. I don't think it's working. Let's see here. Now then, can you hear me now? Ah. Oh. Is it working now? No. Let's see. Is it working now? Is it working now? Can you hear me? Huh. Well, good. I don't know. I don't know which one's which. I'm running behind some way here. Uh. Does anybody know why I'm running behind so far? Huh? Now, is it working now? Uh. Huh, it's kind of confusing for I'm running probably a minute behind and I don't know why it's doing that. Huh, but if it's working. Got some good news today. Went to my doctor and had chemo. And uh, everything went real good. Didn't have no problems at all. And they called me on the way home. And they said my PSA had dropped from 224 to 68. So I'll take that anytime. It, 68's not real good, but everything went real good. Didn't have no problems at all. And they called me on the way home. And they said my PSA had dropped from two twenty-four to sixty-eight. 
Yeah. I'll take that any time. The 68's not real good, but it's like, Now then, I think this in here, let's see now, wait just a second, where is the, I'm a guy for the devil out of this stuff, I mean, that, that, that's the only way I can make it work, yeah. if I can find the volume on this, okay. I think I've got it going now. I can, I'm, I'm in tune with you. I'm seeing you on my laptop, and I'm reading the, the comments on my iPhone. <laughs> Craziest thing it ever was, but it works, you know. Uh, seems like everything's working good. I'm not real good with these live feeds, but. Uh, Richard Pryor is glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear it too. Thanks for the prayers. Great news. Pray it to zero, Mr. McCoy. I believe you can. And uh, that took a lot off my mind. For 68 ain't good, really. Your PSA should run anywhere from zero to seven. But I'll take 68 over 224 for that. That was like 150 some points drop, and uh, you know if we if we can keep bringing it down like that, that that couldn't be nothing but good. So I'm awful proud of my doctors and stuff, and I'm really thankful that this chemo ain't made me sick. It's uh, I've not been sick hardly any. I just get so tired I can't go. But like yesterday, we saw down at the sawmill. If it hadn't rained day, I could have saw it a little bit sure too. But that's that's it. How's the weather? Where are where you all are at? <coughs> Let's see. Happy Thanksgiving, Jason Williams. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Mother has got the turkey in the refrigerator thawing. She's a she'll cook all day tomorrow, pies and Tater salad and cream corn and all that stuff. We may be poor, but we eat good. You can look at me and tell that. I believe I'm one of the very few people that goes on chemo and actually gains weight. I can walk by a piece of cake and gain five pounds. So, but uh, that's, a, that's a good deal, you know. And I hope all of you is healthy and good. Uh... I, stopped, I talked to Steve Miller, Steve Martin, sorry about that, Steve, uh, I guess he's last week, and he's doing all right, and uh, I told y'all, Arthur Rogers had to have open heart surgery, and I think he had five bypasses, he's in one of my videos, he's a logger, he logs in this area, he's one of the better loggers, if not, not the biggest logger in this area, so. But old Arthur, he, he's as tough as woodpecker lips. He'll, he'll pull through it. I need to call him and see how he's doing, but I thought I'd give him a day or two to kind of heal up a little bit. But it uh, seems like it's raining everywhere. It rains here. I mean, it it's wet here. These boys can't get in the woods. I've got orders. I need smoke. Nobody can get me none. It's it's just a, a, a wet mess, you know what? But around here in the fall of the year and winter, that's what it does. And see, like up north, you fellas can get it to freeze and, and go in and out, but it don't never really freeze hard here. It very seldom does. And if it does freeze hard up on these mountains, well, Dozer will get up on that and run just like it's on the sled runners to kill you. But, uh, you know, you just have to do what you can do. And... My convict, he gets out of jail the 15th of January. So I ain't planning on doing a whole lot till he gets out of jail. They've been two or three wanting to take his job, and I won't let him have it. I like Paul. Paul's my buddy. And uh, I'm going to try to help him get him a moped so he'll be more legal. So 
we'll, we'll see how that works out. So. I'll say hi to Mother Gary. She's in there a puttering away in the kitchen as we speak. She, I don't know what she's doing, but I'm sure she's doing something productive. See, I have to take my phone and see that. Mother, come here. Come here. Come here. You need to say hi to your people, your peeps. And... I'll get her to come by and say hi. She she's a little bashful, you know. I need to say, say hi. Hi. How's everybody? Say Big Daddy, you the most. Big Daddy, you're the most. <laughs> she's my baby. I don't care Happy if she Thanksgiving. is. Thanksgiving. I don't care how old you get. She'll always be my baby. She takes care of me. Sometimes she threatens killing me. She told me the other day. She said, "You do know what there's more than cancer that can kill you." I don't know what she meant by that, but I've got an idea. So. Hey, Wayne. She's a making pumpkin pie. She's going to make sweet tater pie this year. For we've got sweet more sweet taters. And uh, I like sweet tater pie. I really can't tell the difference. Come here, Zoe, and say hi to everybody. This is my granddaughter. She is all right. She takes care of me. There she is. That's Zoe McCoy. She's my firstborn granddaughter. And she's very talented. She dances. She plays a flute. She plays a guitar, I think, for she's quit bringing it up here and letting me listen to it. So I don't know. You know, you can't tell about these youngins. But she takes care of me. We go down to Sawmill and shoot guns every once in a while. She can shoot better than I am. She's got better eyes. So... <laughs> she's all right. I like Zoe. I love Zoe. She's she is one lucky little girl. Not to have me for a papa, but to have mother for a mama, you know. So Jeff said hi, Zoe. Wayne said hi, Zoe. You've got a following now. She waved at you <laughs> on the back side of the camera. But, God, we got 49 people watching me. I'm embarrassed. I feel like Garth Brooks or something other, you know. So, but uh, we'll talk about anything you want to talk about. I feel good. Uh, after getting that news today, it made me feel really good. So, you know, and we're going to have a big Thanksgiving. I don't know how big her Christmas is going to be. It's just me and mother, and we buy something for the grandkids and the young ones, and that's about it. We don't, we don't get much for either one of us. For we don't need nothing. I'd like to get mother something special. If you can think of something other, I'll get mother. I'll get it for her. But I can't think of nothing she needs. I got her a Peavy one time for Mother's Day. She seemed to like that pretty good. And I got her electric saw for her birthday. No Christmas sort of special. I might ought to go get her a husky or a steel. I don't know. But I'll tell you what we need. We need a four-wheeler. That thing is wore out. And if I don't put tars on it, we're just going to be on the rims. It does pretty good. Huh, I've done beat Elite and Jason. Well, I, I like that. But I like Elite and Jason. I like Jason. Jason works a lot real good. He He's my... Comrade, I'd like to have a sup of vodka with him. Dickard with Dave, hey buddy. They're in the frozen north. <coughs> you froze into a popsicle yet? It's bound to be cold up there where you are. So, but I like this. Uh, Jason Williams. How long have I been sawmilling? I've been sawmilling since 1987. I lost my mind. I quit a good job. It paid real good money, and I was going to get rich a logging and promptly lost about $50,000. And then I decided there's more money in sawmilling for they want none in logging. So I sold the logging outfit for about cut my hand off. We was about broke. Well, we was broke. 
and I bought a little old handset sawmill. I traded the truck for it. And uh, had a little mini Moline, Minneapolis Moline power unit, which <coughs> had to start with a crank. You'd be so tired from starting that motor, you wasn't able to saw. Had a five gallon plastic jug on it from a gas jug. And I sent word to one of these bigger log house places down in Tennessee that I'd like to sell them some house logs. Well, they come by, and it was off this cluster here that day. I mean, we we was primitive to say the best. That <laughs> gas jug fell off, and gas splattered. I just thought it was going to burn the place down. They didn't stay long. But I sold them people a lot of house logs over the years. And... Uh, we kept fooling with it and got the thing perfected and sawed a lot of lumber on that little old mill. It's a Meadows mill, handset, and that's, that thing will cut some of the best lumber I've ever seen in my life. It, it, it would cut way better lumber than that automatic mill I've got now, but you had to work for it harder, you know. And we run it till 97, and my son Chad, he was a happiness, and we needed more production, more money, and we bought the automatic mill. We bought it and a chipper and a debarker, road tractor, Peterbilt knuckle boom truck, triaxle. And we hit it pretty hard for probably three or four years. And Chad, he, Chad never did like saw milling. He never did. And the only reason he done it was because of me, because saw milling's my dream. It wasn't his. And I finally realized that, and I told him, I said, if you don't get your job, I don't care one bit, and he did. And he worked Lowe's and two or three other places, and he got on the railroad, and he's been on with them ever since, and he makes real good money, he's got a good retirement, so I'm glad to see that he's he's done well. And uh, we had a 1984 GMC five-star general truck and that's the only vehicle I've ever owned in my life that I really regret selling If I had it to with I'd just build a shed around the thing paint it, and just kept it there as a Paperweight, you know But you know, it's we've done the same thing in Mary's Monte Carlo and I it, it ain't good for a vehicle just to see it, but you know we do But I really liked that truck. Chad loved that truck and it it done a lot of hard work for us. It's a good truck. Yeah. The day I sold it, I had vertigo. God, if you've ever had that, that's some of the awful stuff it ever was. And this old man from Virginia come down here to buy it and the trailer. Had an open top trailer with him. And I was in there sick, couldn't hold my head up. Chad come in there and he'd say he offered us such for it. And I said, no, Tim, you can't do that. We went back and forth. And he finally reached a price that I was wanting. And he said, I'm going to have to have a bill of sale for it. He said, I ain't concerned with the title. He said, Virginia goes by bill of sale. He said, I'll have to have two bills of sale, one for the truck, one for the truck. And I was only wanting to know how to print one out, and I thought I was going to die printing that thing out. But I finally got them printed out, got Mother to fill them out for me and everything. And that old man rich in the glove box that car, and I bet you there's $100,000 in there. And he counted out $100 bills there for about five minutes. and Had two of the roughest looking fellas with him you ever seen in your life. And he, said, he told one of them, said, get in that truck and follow me. And other was driving his big old Buick down the road to win. I ain't never seen him here to tell them since then. But uh, that's it. Hey, MSL logging, 52 now. 52, I'm a star. I am. I'm on this, I, may, I may have to get me a cowboy hat. For I think cowboy was the only one stars, you know. I got a toboggan I could put on. I'd put it on. I got it from Wade. Boy, I really like it. Keeps my bald head warm. But uh, let's see what's going on here. Still raining up your way, MSL? It's rained off and on here, I think. I've been laying in the house doing nothing. I'm pretty, I'm getting pretty good at doing nothing. I may turn pro. Uh, I already been down there sawing. Mother needs to go to the store and get her some stuff for Thanksgiving. And I said, you just go on. I'll, I'll try to hold down the phone. 
I'll sit here and probably dozed most of the day. But uh, it's doing good. Yeah. I don't know if I'm doing that. I see. I don't know if I see you just uh, my face is swelled just a little bit. Mother says I'm swelled all over, but in there laughing. She's a cackling. I may be, I don't know. But I am what I am. Jason Morrow, how hard would it be to get into sawmill in these days? How much ambition you got, Jason? Are you willing to work for nothing for probably six months? If you're going to get into sawmilling before you even start shopping for a meal, find you some markets. Anybody can sawmill. I don't care who you are. If you've got the ambition, you can sawmill. But anybody can't sell lumber. Get you, sawmilling ain't the field of dreams. They won't come to you. You've got to go to them. And there's a lot of crooks out there. If, if the first advice I give anybody to talking about going into sawmilling is number one, find out what kind of market you can get. Number two, location, location, location. I'm in the worst location you could be in. It's down in the hole. stays wet all the time. Buy something, sort of up on the sloping hill. <coughs> and probably no less than five acres. And if you rent the place, realize that you're putting machinery down that is hard to get back up. And if you rent that from somebody that's kind of jealous like the fella, and he says you're really making some good money when the lease runs up, he'll jack the rent up on you. So you're really better off to buy you a piece of property. And, you know, don't spend all your money on equipment. You've got to buy some logs and stuff you need. You either need a line of credit or people will loan you money or something. Else. And you need to be in a hurry. It's got timber. I mean, if ain't no timber around, don't put up a sawmill up. You can't get no logs. But uh, it's possible. Got to have a little bit of luck. Got to have a whole lot of people that believe in you that would loan you a little money. Uh, good location. And markets. You got that, you're, you're a sawmiller. It's just that simple. But uh, if it was me and it's just me, I would put in a circle mill. But now these people that's got these wood misers and stuff, and they do just fine. You know, it's whatever you want to do. But me, I like a circle mill. But, like, videos by Al. He's got a big wood miser, and he does great. Probably does better than I do, forever Al. You know. But just do what you want to do. Follow your dream. And uh, don't be stupid. If you do them things, you'll be all right. And don't trust nobody. I don't care who it is. Don't trust them. Loggers will eat you alive. And these people that buy lumber will eat you alive. So don't never, don't never really trust them. You'll be all right. That'd be my advice. But what do I know? I'm just an old man. It's about half crazy. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, it's raining a lot. Same way logging, too. That's it, MSL. If it's easy, everybody would be doing it, wouldn't it? And, uh, you know, there was a guy told me one time, and I believe this sincerely. He said, you put a four-way intersection in a road, a busily traveled road. And you put three service stations at that four-way intersection. He says, almost instantly, one of them will go broke. They'll be gone. The other two, one will survive, but just barely. <coughs> and the other one will flourish. And that's the way it goes, you know. Uh, 
you just gotta number one believe in yourself if you don't believe in yourself if you ain't a hundred percent in it you'll fail but if you believe in yourself and you have just a smidgen of luck you can do it i mean i know people that's done it Drive shaft through, hey buddy. Gotta run, see you later, drive shaft. Mr. Baker Scats, for the life of me, I can't get in a longer weight live stream, but I'm here 20 minutes later. <laughs> Thank you. That's it, MSL. I mean, You've got to have a love for it. I mean, it's just that simple. And you can't have a whole lot of quit in you either. If you've got a lot of quit in you, you won't never make it. But uh, be smart. You've got to be smart. You can't run out here and be in cut and brush thinking you're going to get logs out of it. And it's... <laughs> It's a whole lot to do with your business savvy, you know. For I've known loggers that was pretty good loggers, but they just could not catch a break. Seems like they was always messing up, you know. You got to be careful who you mess with. They some of these sawmills leave you alive. Skitter Kev, hey Mike, hey Skitter, you're one of my favorite YouTubers. Now, Skitter Kev, he knows about logging and stuff, and he knows about a good man to work for and stuff like that. He's done all right. You know, he could give you some good advice. Yes, Gary, listening to the older ones. But now you got to be careful. Too. A lot of the older ones will tell you, say, don't do it, you can't do it, and all this stuff. Don't pay no attention to them. You can do it if you set your head at I tried MSL. That's 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 absolutely right. Give a man a good day's work, and if he don't appreciate it, go to somebody that will. You know, uh, I know some loggers that got in good with these sawmills, and they absolutely made a fortune. Uh, they, they was a lot of them. It, well, not a lot, but. You know, for every four or five loggers they've won, it just seems to shine, you know. Uh, Arthur Rogers, prime example. Arthur has done real well, you know. And uh, Arthur's dad was smart, and Arthur's smart, and they, they built this thing up and, and doing good. You're welcome, Skitter Kev. You're a good guy. That's it, MSL. Good evening, Greg Neville's nerves. Greg, I'll just call you Greg. Yeah, I got a good color. I feel good. I feel real good today. For, like I said, I got a little bit of good news. And I figure I ain't going to die tonight, you know. How's authors doing good? I ain't called him in two days. I thought I'd let him get healed up. He got home. He had five bypasses, but authors as tough as they come, so he'll be all right, I'm sure. And I'm sure he'll have to change his diet. For authors like me, he's pretty heavy. I'd say he'll be as poor as a whip of wheel here in about six months. But uh, author's a good guy, and he'll, he'll come out of this. I'll, I'll tell him you was asking about him, Skitter. Yeah, MSL, you're better off to cut for somebody and try to buy timber. For now, I have found that these bigger sawmills will actually pay you more to cut their timber, and they'll pay you for your timber by the time you take the stumpage out and everything. is, is uh, you know, that's just the way it is.
a very handsome. I will. I'll give him your phone number, MSL. I just, I should have called him today, but I've been lazy. I'll call him tomorrow probably for sure, you know. I've got a lot of respect for Arthur Rogers. Arthur is, Arthur is one of these people that don't strain him one bit to be good. Him and his dad worked side by side, and his dad was absolute legend. He was. He's, he's still Ray Rogers' stories are going around. He can make you some magic to pinch his head off, but my God, he's a mountain of a man. <coughs> I wouldn't have thought about trying to fight him. If you shot him, it probably just made him mad. And five minutes later, he's a hugging you, you know. You just can't be. He's just one of the finest people there ever was. And Arthur's just as good or better. Arthur, Arthur is just a good person. And he's done well, and I'm proud of him for doing that. And he works hard. Got a big farm. You know, he farms. He raises a lot of cows and stuff. He ain't just a logger, you know. But uh, he puts out the logs and he, everything's going good. And he couldn't have picked a better time to be sick for it, so you couldn't get in the woods no way. That's the end of MSL. By the time you put the roads down, do all this other stuff. And nine chances out of ten, if it's a real good patch of timber, some big sawmill would have bought it anyway, you know. I logged for several years, and I never did buy but one real good patch of timber. And it was like a mile off the main road. I had to build a truck road into it, and nobody would go up there and look at it if they didn't think anything was there. And uh, I made real good money off of it. But most of this stuff, just little old patches, four or five acres, you know, and stuff these big sawmills didn't go to do. There was a guy I know. <coughs> Daddy had one of the best patches of timber I've ever set foot in. They was actually oaks in that thing. It was over eight foot through. And his daddy died and left him a farm. And he decided rather than to deal with sawmills, he was going to log it himself. I would bet money that he didn't get half what the timbers were. Probably closer to a third. I don't know how many hundred thousand dollars that patch of timber would be worth. For the day was, God, I wouldn't doubt if they went two or three million feet in there. And I mean, it was all. That old man was particular that he wouldn't even let nobody go in there and hunt. It was red oaks in that thing to die for. Poplar. I mean, it it was just good timber. And he'd have been way better off. And the guy that bought it off of him traded around somewhere, and he got a big patch of timber. And the first thing he done is auctioned it off the highest bidder. So that tells you a lot right there, you know. Uh, you got to be careful dealing with these timber brokers and stuff. You better off to. He'd have been better off to went to sawmill and said, "I want to sell you this timber, but I would like to cut it, or just sell you the timber and stick money in your pocket." He'd have lived a lot better. But you know, you live and learn. But uh, it's it's a whole lot in who you do business with. That good patch of timber I was talking about. We went in there and started cutting, and I took two loads, and they was mostly butt logs, for that's what was closest to the knuckle bone, to a little old sawmill out here at Mars Hill, and they brought $230 a load. I told Mother, I said, we can't do this. I said, I, I'm, by the time I pay the stumpage, we ain't making nothing. And I dealt with Gilkey lumber down in Rutherford before, and I called them, and they said, yeah, we'll buy it. Well, I took two loads down there, and the first load I took, this guy, just, the scaler, he just handed me a yellow ticket, and I said, what do I need to do with this? He said, we pay every Thursday. He said, that's just for your records. So I come back home, and I loaded a nut. I think I took them three loads. And I got down that night with a pencil trying to go over there 
buying sheet and what is marked on that ticket. And I told my visit, I said, well, this couldn't be right. This is nearly $500. Now, we're talking about like 1985 or six. And uh, them, uh, I took them three loads. And them three loads brought almost $1,300. And if I'd have kept a deal in with that fella over there, it brought about $700, 750 So it pays to shop around, you know. Some of these mills will absolutely rob you. And I can honestly say down there at Gilkey, when they give you that sheet, what they pay for what, that's exactly what they pay, you know. They ain't no bullshit about it. So there's a bunch of little poplar right there at the landing. I needed to cut them and didn't have enough sense to just make paper wood out of them, you know. And I cut them and took them down there, and they averaged $70 a thousand. And I was paying 85 for them, <laughs> timber or so. Learn a valuable lesson right there. Desert logger, what's going on, brother? You're absolutely right, Desert. You've got to be able to put out the production. If you can't put out production, you, you'll you go broke. It, the more you put out, the more you make, you know. Uh, the days of having one little old bulldozer and a knuckle boom and a tandem log truck and making a living pretty much behind us. Hey, trucking channel, you behaving yourself tonight? You ain't in no fighting or nothing, are you? That trucking channel's a good channel. You ought to watch it. He, he, him, and his, him and his wife, they tickle me to death. Yeah, MSL. I'm, anybody that does it, somebody's going to get you somewhere, you know, and it, it's just lessons learned. Hey, Robert, Nickel, Nickel, Nickel. N I C O L, Nickel. I'm a redneck. I can't talk good, so I can get the Robert out. How's that? Howdy. Appreciate you coming on here. Desert Logger's got a good channel, too. He's. He's down in the south, probably Texas, Mex New Mexico or somewhere. He's got all kinds of stuff. He he has got more equipment than most equipment places. Now, you good all the time. Uh, trucking Review Channel. There's sometimes you're better than you are at others, but you always good. You, you my buddy. I'd rather have you on my side as a gimme. I'll tell you that right now. Hey, Dave Haley. You going to have a big Thanksgiving? You going to eat a turkey or a deer? Who was your uncle, Fred? Uh, I know some sawmills over there. There was two or three. There's one in, and I can't remember his name. But he sawed a lot of lumber. And then Giles Shelton on Devil's Fork, he had a big mill. MSL logging needs some land to lease to hunt. Go up on the flat top, MSL. There's all kind of deer up there, ain't they? That's government land. Just shoot them all and let God separate them. Hey, Big Fred. You be good, Richard. Appreciate you stopping by. Jesse McCoy, do you know Max Ham? No, I don't. I wonder if we can, Jesse, where are you from? I don't think God thought enough to make two sets of McCoys. I will, Desert Logger. You're one of my favorite channels. You ought, you ought to have 100,000 subscribers. I like to watch you. You're always in a good humor and you're upbeat. 
I get down and I'm whiny sometimes. I can watch your channel and it'll pick me up. They are a lot of hunters up there. I used to hunt that years ago. Randy. Randy, Randy, Randy. It don't ring a bell. Jesse McCoy, my dad, my dear old dad was from Sneedville, Tennessee. Somewhere up in there. And he wound up in uh, Kingsport. Hmm. We may be kin to ain't no ten. I never did know my daddy. He was a rascal. He really was. He denied me why, sweet and lovable as I am, I don't know. But he said I wasn't his. And, uh. I never did see him but two times. He didn't speak to me neither time. But now he married, he, the last woman he married, and he stayed married like 30 years, Ruth. She is one of the, she is one of the finest people you'd ever want to meet in your life. Thank a lot of her. I never I never went around them until 2004 or 5. You know, I figured if he didn't want to see me, it wouldn't need really me to look him up. Well, Steve Mumstead, you're an inspiration to me, too. For you know, This really helps to put these videos out and people pray for me. And I have made some really good friends on YouTube. I mean, I really have Logger Wade, Steve Billows, Stump Jumper, Dale Reynolds, uh, Alex, uh, Skitter Kev. I mean, these is good people. Uh... I think a lot of Logger Wade, I mean, Logger, he just, he just a good somebody. And Stevie, Steve, when I was beat down pretty hard, Steve got in his car and he drove down here to see me. And uh, about 600 miles. I mean, I ain't got no friends around here, I'll even come a mile to see me. <laughs> you know, I have, but I, you know what I'm saying. But now Stevie's number one, as far as I'm concerned. And Wade is, too. And uh, Stump Jumper, you won't find a better fella than Stump Jumper. And Skitter Kelby the one. And I know I'm missing people, you know. That's why I hate to brag on anybody. I'll forget people. And I, I don't want to hurt no feelings. I really don't. Uh, I'm like Doc Holliday on that wet, wide dirt movie. Somebody said, I've got a lot of friends. Well, I don't. I've just got a few, a lot of acquaintances. But as far as friends, I've got very few. You probably count them on one hand. So, I'm very selective in my friends for I have been burnt. You know, you don't live on this earth 67 years without finding a few people out. But, uh, yeah. Uh, Northern Minnesota. God, I bet it's cold up there. Mountain City, Tennessee is where Jesse growed up at. That's up in the hills, huh? I will our MSL. It's, uh, it's internet. It's a, it's a struggle at best. Uh, I've got Charter. And they're higher than anybody else, but it's the best internet, and they make me so mad. I, I'd quit them in a minute if I could get some better, but I can't get none no better. <coughs> I've got a cough. It's just medicine. It ain't, I ain't sick. I've just got a cough. So. We probably a little kin. Are you any kin, Jesse, to the original McCoys that fit up there and got killed and killed people? My half-brother, Roger McCoy, he passed away in 2012. And he swore up and down with his direct descendants, but I don't know. You know, you can hear anything. But I never did know none of my... Roger's the only McCoy that I ever met. And he was a good, and I thought a lot of my half-brother Roger. He's one of the finest people you ever seen. And he got cancer in 2012 or 13. He passed away. He is 67. 
Roger's all right. He was he was a fine guy. Absolutely, Tom. Uh, you know, it's easy to say he's my friend, but, you know. And, you know, he, he may be your friend, but a good friend will, you call him at 12 o'clock at night and he'll bring you shovels to help bury the body. You know, that's what a good friend is. A good friend won't come and get you out of jail. He'll be sitting beside you in jail. <laughs> There's a old boy over here, Bobby Height, and uh, I could call Bobby at any day, any time at night, and if he could get here, he'd be here, and I'd do the same for him, and uh, he's as good a friend as I've got in the world, and they, he's a retired police captain, I ain't going to say his name, but now, he's a good, and I think a lot of Tom. Well, I don't say his name, but I ain't going to say his last name. <laughs> He's kind of scared of him. He's cops crazy anyway, you know. Tom's all right. He's a good guy. One of these people that never cut a corner in his life. He's as straight as arrow, and it's very seldom you find somebody like that. Nathan Feather, evening, Mike. Hello, Nathan. Jesse McCoy, they say, well, we're probably kinned, you know. If you're crazy, I know you're kin for I, us McCoys is kind of known for that, you know. Uh, there's a family of McCoys that lives here, and they're from up in Kentucky, I think. And I'd say they're from kin, too, but I don't know how close. I've talked to them a time or two. But it's hard for me to run family trees and stuff when you ain't never climbed that family tree. For I know very little about the McCoys. My dad's name was Dewey McCoy, and he was a mechanic by trade, and he worked pits over there at Bristol Speedway, and he was a heavy equipment mechanic, and he done well in life, and his wife, Ruth, worked for Eastman Kodak, and they done well. They done real well, and, uh, you know, somebody said, well, you ordered law Ruth for your part. Why would I law Ruth? She owes me nothing. My dad's dead, you know. He's the one that owed me and he's gone, so. That's, he And he really didn't owe me nothing for he never did cost me nothing, you know. Uh, I got by just fine without him. And uh, he actually made me a better person because when I was coming up and said, I said, I'll never be like him. And my son Chad's my best friend. And why anybody wouldn't want to be around their kids beyond me for I've got a lot of enjoyment out of my kids, I guarantee. My daughter, I'd rather torment them as eat me hungry even to today. Hey Al. Uh what do you think about running a band mill? I talked about a circle mill. And you do real good with a band mill. Uh Sometime do a video talking about your circle mill, about the pluses on it, you know. So there's a lot of people that like to get into this, and, you know, they can learn a lot from us older fellas. Big Daddy 1992. I think I got your sticker. I've got three or four over here I've got to put on my toolbox, and I've just been lazy. I'm a very lazy person, but I will get out there. I'll dig them up and do a video and show them all. But if anybody wants to send me a sticker, send me one. I like stickers. I like to put them on my two ball. Thank you, JW. I always wanted to go to Texas. That's just a fine place. Can't believe we've got 59 people watching me. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. Feel like a star. <laughs> got my Harley hat on today. I usually wear my stump jumper hat. Stump jumper sells a good hat. Or he's got, I don't know if he can still sell enough. It's a good hat. Uh, Big Fred, I do some woodworking. I wonder if you see much spalding in one. Yeah, I do. Spalding maple, I sold a bunch of that stuff. 
his old boy come back here and he's as tight as a bark on a hickory. And he had a bunch of spalded maple. And he didn't know what he had. And I said, what? Well, don't look exactly right. I bought it pretty cheap and I sold it and I made some real good money out of it. And I think he found out about it for he ain't been back. But And I wasn't for sure it was any good, you know. But I saw it and it, it was just spalled as it could be. And I've got, I saw some hickory down there and it had a little spalled in it. And I've got some sycamore that's got some spalled in it. And I've done sold all it. As a matter of fact, I'm selling it to my cancer doctor. So. But uh, yeah, we do a little spalled in wood. And every once in a while you'll run into a, a white oak. I ain't never cut but two trees. And it's got, I don't get, I don't know if you'd call it spalling or what, but it's just got knots and bad spots all through it. Some prettiest wood you ever seen in your life. I told this man, hey, Jeff Skew 62. Al Gresky, I'm a star. Yeah. I'm a lot of things sometimes. <laughs> But this is a good outlet for me. It makes me feel good to, to uh, you know, visit with everybody, talk to everybody, make a fool of myself. And you're a star too, Al. You've got, you've got a good setup there. I bet you've even got that place heated where you can stay warm. So, you know. Let's see. BuzzFeed 54. Good evening, Mike from... Northern California. Hey, BuzzFeed. You in any of that far out there? You up past it. Trading wood for chemo. I love it. Yeah, you got to do what you got to do. I have got one of the best counter doctors in the world. And I'm not just saying that. But he told me, he said, don't you ever say my name. So I won't. But he is that good. There was a man from England come by here. You tell that old man had more money than God. And he brought his wife here 15 years ago just to see my doctor. And I mean, they've got, you know, it ain't free health care, but you know it's provided health care in England. And he, he come here and paid my doctor. And his wife's still alive 15 years later. He's that good, you know. He don't win them all, but his batting average is pretty good. Hey, Big Daddy. Thank a lot of you. Wish I could trade to my doctor. I'll tell you something about these doctors. These doctors out there, you don't want them to touch your cat, much less you. And if you ever get, you know, something major wrong with you, cancer, heart, something other, if you can find a recently retired nurse, they'll tell the dirty on all of them. They ain't got nothing in the game. You'll never get one doctor talking nothing. It's suck like an unwritten rule. But now a nurse will tell you. And that's what I did. You know, I started out. And one of my doctors is all right now. I ain't really putting him down. But mine and his personality didn't mesh. And uh, I've got a doctor now, same thing. And me and him gets along real good. And he's probably no better than that other, but, you know, I can talk to him. And my wife said here not long ago, she said, you know, doctors has changed. said, doctors don't talk down to you like, you know, they used to. I said, doctors ain't changed. We just got, got smart and got better doctors, you know. But if you get much wrong, he finds you the best doctor that you can. If they some of them, it'll kill you. Or that's what I think. That's just my two cents. And I've got three doctors. and. My main cancer doctor, I'd put him up against any of them. And then uh, my radiologist, I really like him. And my urologist, I really like him. They're both excellent doctors. So, and that takes a lot of worry off of you. You know, when you have to start second guessing your doctors, it puts a lot of stress on you. So, that's my thoughts. Oh, gosh, that's cold, Dale. I'd chill out there. So 
Sorry about that buzz feed. I hope it don't get up there where you are. I reckon that's a bad far. Far scares me. We don't have a lot of far around here because, you know, we cut the wood and stuff. Well, we just ain't got the forest that you just got up there, you know. I ain't going to get all political about cutting undergrowth and all that for I don't know. I've never been to California. But now there was a guy that worked for me from Oregon, and he would go to California and these other states and cut undergrowth. And they, I know he told me they stopped it. So that might have something to do with it. I don't know. Big Fred, I've never worked sycamore. Sycamore's all right. It's bad to warp in the pile. <coughs> and it'll warp coming off saw some, but if you ever get that stuff straight, it's some pretty wood. It, it's got a real pretty color to it. Years ago, like dressers and stuff, the door drawer parts that you couldn't see was made out of sycamore. Yeah, we're still talking about a, another double wide. Uh, JW, hope it works out. Well, I'm pretty sure it will, but I'm just, I ain't going to do it this winter. I'm going to wait the spring for we. I want to take my time to do it right. Uh, Nathan Feather, it moves like crazy, but it's, it is beautiful. I bet it is if you ain't no, you know, if it ain't coming at you. But uh, we don't have a lot of forest farts around here. Knock on wood. Uh, when I was a teenager, we got drafted into fighting one. I, back then, if, if you come by and the Forest Service, sir, I could draft you into fighting that far, and I reckon you had to do it. They said we did. And I lost my class, friend. Yeah, Big Fred, I've cut a lot of ambrosia maple. It's got the gray streaks and the little ambrosia holes in it. It's pretty wood, real pretty wood. Uh, I always wanted to build a set of kitchen cabinets out of it, but never did. But now I went into a house. It was like a million-dollar house, and the ceilings was ambrosia maple, and the floors was clear cherry. It's real pretty. It's nice. Troy, no, it didn't get a bit of ice. It got down to 33. Here we got to within one degree. Now, north of us in Wolf Laurel over there, they had a pretty bad ice storm. Broke a lot of trees down and stuff. And I've got a friend that's a doctor over next to Boone over in there. And he didn't get no damage, but his uh, in-laws got some. His, his two big trees fell in their house. One of them took a gutter off her house. It didn't get a whole lot of damage. but his, It made a mess. Big Fred, that had to be beautiful. It was. Be careful, Tom. And good talking to you. I know I ain't supposed to do it like this, but it's the only way I can get this thing to work. I cannot get my messages to come up on that thing. I'll, one of these days, I'll get somebody to show me how. I got on Gator's channel. They some way me and him both is on there. And we talked back and forth for an hour, just like old friends, and we'd never seen one another, you know. I really like him. Gator, if you get a chance to watch his channel. He's up in, uh, somewhere in Canada. Good guy. Big Fred, I just subscribed. Thank you, Big Fred. Big Dog Leather. Howdy, Mr. McCoy. Howdy, Big Dog. Oh, Big Dog makes some pretty stuff. He really does. It. It's just like watching artists watch him whittle on that leather and make it and stuff. I wish I could do that. But I can't. I ain't got much artist ability to me. I've made a few pretty odds and ends, but mostly what I make real good sawdust. Yeah. 
think I'm staying caught up on the subs. Gosh, we've got 69. Now, we're growing this leaps and bounds. You ever seen a bait in your life? Oh, my gosh. Stevie Billows is in the house. Now, you talk about a star. I'm like a C-rated star. Stevie is A. What in the tarnation? I'm just sitting here talking, Stevie. That's about all I'm fit for. Jeff Skews said, hey, Stevie. Stevie's my buddy. He killed two deer the other day. The little fella is deadly. I wouldn't want him mad at me if he had a gun for eating. He'd you way out, John. He can shoot straight. He must be a cowboy. I, I didn't know there's any cowboys in Indiana, but Stevie would have to be a cowboy if he's a straight shooter. Everybody's saying hi to Stevie, and they should. That Stevie is all right. How's the weather up there, Stevie? Come here, Mother, and say hi to Stevie. He can't hear you. You need to see your face. He thinks I'm just throwing my voice. You are. Hey, Stevie. Happy Thanksgiving. I was probably on this thing. I don't know. But I will catch you st text and I'll answer it. If, I, if you send me a text and I don't answer it, you can say, well, he died. For I usually answer my text. Might be two or three hours late. Going to get to work tomorrow, Stevie? Is it going to be bad there, too? When's Wade going to put you in that big green machine? That thing's high off the ground. I'd probably pass out just getting up in it and then flopping around like a dead fish. Big dog said hi, mother. Stevie said hi, mother. She just, like a chicken's butt, she just in and out. She's going there working out. Thanksgiving gets her excited. I'm glad it does. We eat good on Thanksgiving. It's just me and her and Chad and his family. Shannon's up in Kentucky and she can't make it down or won't. I'd love to feed her and torment her. Lay in there, Stevie. That mud ain't no fun, but you can do it. I hate the log in the mud and I hate to wade in the mud. That stuff gets all over you. And I'm a type of person can walk by a mud hole and be muddy from the bottom of my feet to the top of my head, especially if I've got on good clothes. If me and mothers are going somewhere just walking from the house to the car, I'll get mud on me somewhere if it ain't raining three days. Oh, Stevie will do good in that bunch of You gotta be about half crazy to run something like that. And I believe Stevie gets wound up and he can, he can cut anything that grows in the woods and everything. That thing scares me just to watching it. I ain't never seen nothing flop around like that. I'd hit the wrong button now. That bad boy turned over. How big a tree will that thing cut, Stevie? Like cut a three foot tree? Oh, you'll run it, Stevie. I know you will. You've got to. You know, that's just your nature. You'd get in and run it or bust the gut. And you'll do all right. It's that learning curve that'll get you. <laughs> 28 inch pass. That's a good sized tree. Is that thing got enough balance to hold, over, hold up like a 28-inch oak, or will it just cut it and lay it down? How often do I do it? It's the first one I've done. I don't know when. I'm, I may start doing a little bit more. 
where I'm really surprised that this many people want to watch. There's 75 people on here. And I mean, when you get the quality of people like Steve Billows drifting by, you just got to do it. I mean, he's a star. He's got like 3 million subscribers. What do you mean, no, Stevie? Oh, wait, he's done, he's, he's either asleep or working on something. He ain't got time for live feeds, you know. He's running them babies around the house, probably. Or any one, or maybe all of them, ain't no time. Wade's one of these people that don't never sit down and just do nothing. He's got to be going. I don't know, Stevie. I believe you're a star. You'll be wearing a white hat before it's over with. I done see it. I got one out there in the garage. You may see it. I'm going to paint it white. You know, maybe put a racing strap on it with a lightning bolt. Wisdom draws people in. Well, Stevie's here, you know, and he, he I'll tell you what, and this ain't no bullshit. Stevie is probably as good a timber cutter as I've ever seen. And I've seen some good ones. Stevie and Stump Jumper are as good as they come. We are, ain't we, Steve? Bumstead. <laughs> That's what this is about. If I can't make people laugh, I don't want to get on here. And I, what little knowledge I've got, you know, I got the hard way. I always thought my head is too hard for a hard hat to a piece of oak hit me on top of it and laid me out to cold wedge. Changed my thinking after that. Thank you, Alfred. West Coast of Canada. You over there and dickered with Dave's country. I've got an old aluminum skull cap, and it's silver. I don't even know where I got the thing at, but this thing's old. It's at least 30 or 40 years old. I think the little hat band in it is uh, uh, rotten. It's long. And if I'm able to go to the Bunyan next year, I'm going to get everybody that I know or everybody that will to sign it. I just think that'd be cool. I was going to do it this year, but one day we'll come. I know quality, Stevie, and I see it. I really do. Uh, Wade's a good timber cutter, but Wade, Wade gets in a hurry. He's like me. And uh, sometimes getting in a hurry, cutting timber will bite you. But uh, you're good. I'd, I'd put you up in any of them for they There's just so much to learn, you know, and you're interested in that. You got to be interested in it. You got to be interested in sharpening the saw and all that. My idea of sharpening the saw is rub the thing, get the thing where it'll cut straight and maybe not real good, but some knock the tree down, stump, jump the thing, hope it don't fall on you and go to the next. That'll get you killed. But, uh, I've probably in my lifetime met a half a dozen really good timber cutters. And I've probably met hundreds that was like me, just mediocre. It, it's surprising how many really, really good timber cutters there are out there. And the 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 best timber cutter I ever worked around with, that man was so crooked, he'd beat you out of something every day. He worked for me for three days and he got a log chain and a binder and Seemed like a saw chain. I don't know. But he could put a tree down where you could get to it. it amazing. But, I mean, he just, he wanted it all plus 10% and you couldn't work it.
Yeah, I told him, Stevie. I'm getting better. I'm, I've got a long way to go, but this PSA's went going down. It went down over 150 points, so I'm tickled to that. I'll be around to torment you for a while longer. But, uh, Stevie, how many real good timber cutters do you know? You've been around, you, you've actually been around timber cutting more than me. But how many would you say is top of the line that you've met? Uh, and some of these skidder operations, I honestly believe you've got to be about half crazy to run a skidder. For now, these mountains is tough. And I've seen people take skidders down places that I couldn't walk. Uh, Arthur Rogers had a boy working for him, and he rolled one like a ball off the mountain. I think he turned. I think it went over two or three times. Didn't hurt him. Didn't hurt Skidder that much either. But uh, you know, I was always kind of anything with a rubber tar on it in the mountain sort of makes me nervous. I I don't think I could run one of them rubber tar feller bunchers. Them things flop around too much. Thank you, Al. Thank you, Jeff. Hope I ain't no time soon, but, you know, as long as I can keep buying time, I know this stuff's going to get me one of these days, but if I make it till January the 12th, it'll be six years. And then the world of cancer, that's a lifetime. So, I, you know, doesn't live longer than I figured it would. So I figure every day's a gift. That's a cop out, Stevie. <laughs> you ain't gonna say nothing bad about nobody. And that's something I really like about you. And it's true. You know, some of these cutters is production cutters. They can lay wood on the ground. They might mess it up a little bit here and yonder. But in the run of the day, they will cut the side of a hill off. And you've got to have respect for them. And, and then some of them, like, it, I'd want to cut like a walnut or a real fancy tree for me they'll take their time and they'll get the thing down they'll be fine you know and uh they all cutters has got a, a a good side to them as a fella told me one time he said you're the only man i ever seen that could bust a pine said it takes skills for that but in my defense pine was froze you know and it didn't bust but about 15 feet up on it But I always enjoyed cutting timber. Timber cutting's a rush. It's almost an addiction. And, uh, you know, it, it is. You, you just get wound up in it. It's hard to quit. There ain't no better feeling than going a good patch of timber and just lay one down after another all day long. I mean, that's... That's as good a feeling as I ever had. And, you know, like Wade and Stevie and them, that den den where they do their own trimming, where all you'd have to do is lay it down. I'd love to go in on a job like that and just see how many trees I could cut back in my prime. I'd, I'd cut one now. Yeah. You're absolutely right, Stevie. I think it's old school logging. He's got an old timber jack, and that man cuts some of the prettiest timber you ever seen. Now, he can get a tree on the ground. He really impresses me. But, you know, really and truly, you can, if, if you're a decent logger, you can get a big tree on the ground if you're going to take pains of that tree because it's got value to it. What'll get you killed is a little old patch of poplar and them about. 14 to 20 inches through and you get lazy and you just start laying them down the next thing you know one blow up in your face and might kill you and cutting a tree out of a tree it's it's lodged that's a good way to die right there buddy i always told everybody that ever cut timber for me i said if i catch you cutting a tree with another tree lodged in it you're far on the spot 
And old dumb ice me went and cut one one time, and the limb missed my head maybe two inches if it hit me to kill me. Hey, excavating 320. Randall Robinson, hey, mother. Hey, Randall. Al rescued. Yeah, it is adrenaline rush, Al. And sometimes that, you know, very few trees really scared me. But now I've had one like, you take one right next to a big rock cliff or something, you ain't got nowhere to run. If that thing decides to come after you, boy, you just ain't got nowhere to go. That makes me nervous. Cutting forky trees makes me nervous. Them things subject to do anything. And, uh, you know, cutting trees into other trees, like especially poplar. I know a man that got killed, and he was just standing there. He wasn't even a man that cut it. They cut a poplar into a beach, and it ripped a 16-foot limb out of that poplar and threw it back and hit that man in the head and killed him instantly. So, you know. And working in a crowded area, I won't do that. Uh, I seen a young boy almost get killed doing that one time, and I, I just won't do it no more. If it's like a half, a, like an acre, and there's four or five people working in there, I won't do it. Can't do it. Thank you, Crawler Holler. Baltimore, Maryland County, uh, Maryland, Baltimore County, Maryland. Hey, Jake, Al. <laughs> Al, I cut a little old 12-inch poplar the other day in my yard down here. I was going to put up a flagpole that was in the way. <laughs> I started after I cut that thing. I, Mary Ruth trimmed it. I barely made the house sit down. I ain't got no energy at all. I like the thought of cutting timber. I like to sit here and talk about glory days, you know. That's about where I'm at now. I'll never cut more timber. Well, thank you, Carl Holler. If you get a chance, subscribe to The Real McCoy. Appreciate it. Anybody that's watching this thing, if you want to subscribe, thumbs up. That's absolutely true, Stevie. If you ain't got your head, you never want to cut timber if you're in a bad mood or if you've got a lot of burning on your mind. It'll get you killed. Hello, Mark Morenstein from Oregon. There's a guy who worked for me three years from Baker City, Oregon. Finest fella I ever know. Every time I've ever been hurt bad, I was either pissed off or in a hurry or both. The man that owns a company ain't got no business cutting timber. If he's got so much pressure on him, he's thinking about something on down the road and he could get killed. Thank you, Crawler Holler. Just give me a thumbs up every once in a while and that'll, that'll be good. Hello, Joe Eckers from West Virginia. Hey, Joe. Yeah, boy, him old weights will take down a big tree. My sister's first husband, she's married well. I think she's married like seven or eight. But anyway, I was cutting oak, and I didn't know what I was doing. I went this before I ever started cutting timber. And the thing wouldn't fall. It'd open up a little bit, and it'd close back. And I had no idea where the thing's going to go. I was sticking rocks in it, trying to get it to follow. And I looked over, and he was laying there. I said, get your ass up from there. I said, if this falls, it'll kill you dead. 
said, get over under some more. And sure enough, I finally fell. But my God, people can be stupid sometimes, you know. And I don't like nobody around me and I'm cutting timber. And I don't I don't want to trim for somebody and I don't want nobody trimming for me. If you need to sort of see that tree fall, know what's in the behind and stuff, you know. I am staying warm, Nick. Anywhere I go, I try to find a heater. That's it, Steve. I've got a little machine shop out there in the garage. I'll try to do something, turning something. I ain't had nothing to break in a while, but I have to fix my own stuff. I'm, I, my junk's old. You have, to, you have to repair it yourself, you know. It takes too long to order a part. And my sawmills, you know, it's a common. It ain't hard to make a part for it. Hey, Garland. You been behaving yourself? I've been doing good, Garland. Got a good report back from the doctor today, so I'm a kicking high. Garland lives over here, and I call it Lee Sister. They call it Lester. It's over there. Well, it'd be over there, but I'm pointing the wrong way, you know. Sixty-six are watching. I like it. We do like to have a lot of people watching. Uh, yep, if you cut a tree, three foot tree of the hacks, oh, you've done a lot of work. There was an old man come down and saw me one time. There was a poplar so big I cut and cut, cut and saw it, and I can saw three foot. He had a little old bitty saw with about a 20 inch bar on that thing, and I bet you he is 80 years old. He sat and buzzed on that thing all day. And he cut one side and I turned it over and he cut the other side and it still had like a foot in there. And we rammed the forks and that thing shook it right hard and finally got it apart. I don't see how the saw stood it. We got it apart. I always wanted to take some dandy mine or black powder and something and blow one apart, but I just ain't never done it. I was afraid of blowing myself up. I ain't good with explosives. Out of boy excavating 320. I'd like to know how to TIG. I can MIG a little bit and stick weld decent. If I'm a stick welding, I'll start out and it'll look like a horse's butt sewed up with a grapevine, but I'll finally get a little bit better, and by the time I get a little bit better, I'm done. Yeah, Steve, you get rested up, and I will give Mother a big hug. Get ready and have sweet dreams tonight. Dream about hitting Tater with a rotten egg or something other, you know. Just got in from a sawmill. You work all the time, Al. But you've got a nice mill in there. That's one of the few band mills that I really like the way you've got it laid out. I ain't never been a big fan of them Woodmiser band mills, but now I like that, you know. It, well, you've got that thing... That, Laid out there, you can do something with it. Appreciate it, excavating 320. There's an old fella called Texas Viking. That man can TIG weld anything. I've never seen nobody that good. He's been in it so long, he just does jobs that he picks up now, you know. Texas Viking. Big Fred, what makes a veneer long? It can't have no limbs on it or no defects, cat faces and stuff. If it does, it'll degrade it. And the bigger it is, the better they like it. And it don't need to have a whole lot of sap on the side of it. There's a lot of variables. Can't have no worms and stuff in it. 
it just has to be almost perfect log for its veneer log. That's why it's expensive. I just ain't that many of them. Oh, you'll get better at excavator. Practice makes perfect. You know, if you practice long enough, you can't get them so good. That's how good you'll be. Uh, I never. My son, he's a welder for the railroad. And I bet you that boy hadn't burned a dozen rods when he went went to work for a And he's been around torches and welders his whole life. He just didn't show no interest in it. And they sent him to welding school. And as far as stick welding, I'd put him up again most anybody. What kind of sewing do I make most money on, Steve? I make most money of cutting pine. Poplars. And I do good at cutting poplar too, but most of my wealth has come from pine. And I'll tell you why. Pine's cheap. Uh, oak, you can sell it, but you have to pay high stumpage. And it's so hard to find a good market for oak. Uh, to sell oak, you need about 30,000 feet to start with. For You've got to divide it up into so many grades. And you have to have a mill like log of weight nymphs to really cut high grade lumber. That's just the way it is. And mine, we don't cut high grade. I never, I never did do all that well at it. But uh, I can make good money cutting pine house logs. Cut a lot of house logs. There's one guy I've cut like 16 houses for. And uh, pine's my bread and butter, and it has been for years. Yeah, excavate not. Well, I'm old school and stick welding is all I've ever known. And I've got a little old cheap Harbor Freight MIG welder. And that thing will surprise you how good a weld it'll put down. But I ain't, I, I just use, uh, I don't use gas. Uh, uh, I, I use uh, core, what is it? You know what I'm talking about. Stop by Crawl Crawl Holler sometime. Be glad to see. You. Uh, just contact me before you come, so I'll be sure and be here. Dean Parks, Mike, I finally will. I guess not. <laughs> yeah, gasless flux core. That's what it. Dicker to a day flux core. Say I get chemo brain. I can't remember names of stuff. I know what it is, but I just can't remember its name. These people I've been around for years, I'll forget their name. Maybe that and I'm crazy. I don't know. But they say I'll get chemo brain. And my taste buds is gone. I told Mary Ruth the other night, I said, peel me orange. And she had bought some orange and them things was just almost grapefruit just to say. She brought that in here and sat down and I started eating it. She said, do you like it? I said, yeah. I couldn't taste it. That's right, Dickard. If you've got a good machine now, you can you can put some MIG down. Yeah. Wayne Thorpe, kind of late for a school night. Yeah, it is. We're talking welding. We're, we're sticking stuff together. That's it. Wayne, I remember dog's name. Well, Adrian, a lot of them still use dozers and real steep ground. 
But if they can turn the skidder off the side of the mountain house or more to land, they'll come down through there with it. Hey, some of these boys put a skidder in places that you can't walk. No, very few skylines around here. I've seen one in my lifetime, and I think they went broke. Playing with angry pixies, Dave, that's it. I hooked three batteries together one time before we got electricity down to the mill and done some welding with it. And it, I was out there the other day at my junk pile, and I seen one of them wells, and it's still over. This chemo brain, it's a little different. You know, you notice it. But I'll be talking to Mary Ruth like about a customer or something. Other, and their name will just leave me. And I I can't remember it. It's kind of. But now, if I'm talking to them, I'll remember their name usually. It's funny how that works. And it messed my peripheral vision up just a little bit. If I ain't careful, I'll cut the awful slab there was on the very first cut, but it's just the first cut. I don't know why it's like that. But I've learned to not come out quite as far as I think I ought to, and I'm getting by all right. Oh, Chucky, 2009, he, he, he's he got a good channel. He can, when I started watching him, he couldn't hardly weld nothing. Now he's a, he's, he's a good welder. One of my greatest fears to be down there sawing and just not know what to do. That would be terrible. For 90% of what I know is just repetition. Once I get in the groove, I don't have to think about it. I just do it, you know. And I'd hate to just all of a sudden be lost. That, I don't like it. Thank you, Dave Harper. I appreciate that. I really do. But uh, I know back in the day when we first put that mill up, we was putting out about 10,000 feet a day. Never worked any harder for less in my life. <laughs> I'll never forget this. There's one day here that there was over $20,000 changed hands down there at that sawmill. Never forget it. And I was in there at 10 o'clock at night doing books. And when everything was said and done, me and mother made $186. I told mother, I said, this is insane. And I started cutting back after that. And now, if I make $186, I don't have to set up till 10 o'clock at night to get it. Big Fred, we cut a lot of cross ties one time, made some good money at it. If a man was set up for it and could get the logs, you can make some good money off cross ties. I grade them pretty hard, way harder than you'd think, but you can still make some good money off them. A meal like that in a mine, now you talking just meal? Or you're talking all the rolling stock, debarkers, chippers, and all that. Just the meal, somewhere $20,000, $25,000. And then you got to have a chipper to get rid of your slab. You've got to have a loader to move stuff around, and you need a debarker to get their clothes off. But, you know, if you're just starting out, you can buy your pressure washer and wash your logs, and you can buy all right. You can just pile your slabs up and burn them. And, uh, you know, it, it's whatever you want. Same thing, Adrian. I'll be eating long and it's so good, and then all of a sudden you can't taste it.
I mentioned you old school. Here a while ago talking to Steve Billow. You're one of the few loggers that really impressed me as being very good at what you do. Well, youngins, I'm going to have to get off here. My phone is a dying on, on me. It says low battery, 10% is going to close. Uh, you know, but old school. On YouTube, you're one of my top three. Stump Jumper, Steve Billows, and you. I want not I wouldn't try to make a one, two, three out of him. All of them is just as good. So, glad you're on here. Well, I'm going to have to get off from here for my batteries is dying. And if I can't see who's talking to me, I'll be screwed, blued, and tattooed. So, good talking to you. We'll do this again. I may do this, you know, just every once in a while. You can't never tell. Uh, I think my battery's done dead. So, I'll catch you later. Ta ta. I don't know how you close this thing. We'll figure it out together. I may have something other that I can't can't get rid of. There we go. Night night, people. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe.